Hey there everyone and welcome back to the Flexbox training. Now before we go ahead and move on to the further training and getting started with the basics, you have already learned the power of the, uh, the Flexbox. Now we are going to move ahead and learn the basics first and after that we are going to again jump back into some of the practical experiences of the Flexbox. And in this video, we are going to talk about the axis on the Flexbox as well as some of the directional properties. Now directions are the most important part in the Flexbox and once you have grabbed the, the, the knowledge of the directions in the Flexbox, everything is gonna just line up automatically. So let's just get started. And before we get started, I have created a new folder here starting which is always going to be our base point. This is going to be the file where we are going to always get started, kind of a base starting point for everybody. And we'll be creating new folders like 0102. We will be copying and pasting from the starting folder every time so that we can see some of the default little bit cleaner CSS here. Let me show you how does that look. And let me fire up my Atom. And I'm going to open up. I have already copied and pasted it into 01. So this is how our base file is going to look like. And I am going to push all of these code into GitHub and I'll give you the link in the next video. And there we go. This is how it looks like. You can all also pause and just write the CSS. Pretty basic CSS, a head tag, a few auto-generated tag from Emmet. And we have linked up our default CSS as well as flex CSS. And we have got further some container and that's it. And in the default CSS, we haven't got much. You can always pause the video and can write the commands and all write the CSS and everything. Some basic colorings, font selection, HTML is going to have a linear background, which I showed you in the past movie, where did I picked it from. And inside the container, we have got some properties and we have got some container on hover it. Okay, so how does it look like? And the flex CSS is actually blank where we are going to write our code. So let me just fire up index HTML and start the server so that we can see how does it look like. And this is how it is going to look like. And if I just delete the code here, and that is how the basic of our CSS is going to look like. Nothing extraordinary, nothing uh, that we cannot understand um, drastically there, pretty easy one. Okay, so we are going to always copy and paste this. Okay, now if you're writing this along with me, make sure that uh, the default CSS is put up first and then the flex CSS so that we can overwrite any of the property. Okay, so what we're gonna do, so first of all, we are going to understand a few things. So let me just create a div with a class container and there we go, oops, command Z, container and hit tab there and there we go. As soon as I did it, uh, nothing is going to happen because it doesn't have any element. And let me just give it a div there. Okay. So with these few properties, what is going to happen whenever we are going to create a new div or anything, it's going to just generate. And it's easier for me to point out the things if the cl color here drastically changes here. Also, I've given some border here to this, uh, this internal division, not the main division, so that uh, we can actually learn how the elements are being created. Okay, good so far, nothing extraordinary. Now, let's have a couple of more division. I'm gonna hit Command, Shift, and D. You can hit Control, Shift, D to duplicate a few lines of the divisions here in the atom. And we can see this is how it does. And uh, nothing extraordinary, I would say. In the default web page, we already know that the division is a block level element and it covers entire block. So we can see the first block, second block, third and fourth. And what I can do is I can just put some values here like one, two, three, four, and probably one more, one more. So I'm gonna just change it to five and six. Okay, pretty cool. So we have few elements here and that is okay. We have been seeing this for a number of times. Now the important part in the flex box is the knowledge of directions. Once you have the understanding of the axis and direction, it's going to just be super easy. Now what I mean by that. Now in the flex box, we play all of our game based on direction, the main axis and the vertical axis. The main axis is from left to right in web. Again, I repeat that. The main axis in the flex box on the web is left to right, that is horizontal. 
and you get to know that what is vertical axis, it's from top to bottom. But a lot of people does this mistake when they move on to the mobile world. When they jump on to the React Native or other frameworks which uses the Flexbox, they just assume everything is going to line up from left to right. And that is wrong because in the mobile world and frameworks, this is being applied and it is already defined that the main axis is going to be from top to bottom for the mobile. I repeat that again, for the mobile. So for the web, the main axis or the default axis is left to right, horizontal. And for the mobile, it just reverse itself. So a little bit confusing there, I can understand it. Uh, but for the web, let's just keep it from left to right or horizontal. Okay, so how does it impact the things? It impacts the things a lot, okay? And we're going to talk here about the flex direction property. And this flex direction property, the, the greatest part about the flexbox is that it's not humongous. It's not big. It's just small and we can just cover it up quickly. So let's go here and let's open up our flex CSS and pick a few things here. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick up and going to uh, select the flex directions here. Okay, so how can I do that? I'm going to first select my container. Container, there we go and there we go. Now container is not going to do anything extraordinary. We are going to just say, hey, I want to use Flexbox, so I'm gonna say Flex. As soon as I say this, now notice what happens here. Everything is aligned up just like that. Now why is it happening? Now because now since I'm following the Flexbox, it says, hey, your default direction is to line up everything from left to right. So it has just said that and it has done that, that your you're going to follow now horizontal axis, so it's going to be left right alignment. No matter is it a block level element or not or whatever it is, it's just going to follow that. In order to display that a little bit more, I'm going to use border and let's just say two pixel solid black. So let's just give it a black, oops, black there. There we go. So we can see this is our entire outer container and we are going to simply, as soon as I told it, hey, I'm gonna follow the flex box, I'm gonna say display flex, it says, okay, I understand you. And now I'm going to just put everything in a line, a line element following the my basic rule, which says uh, flex direction is going to be row. Now, I haven't mentioned the flex direction, but it's a default property. So when I say something like uh, display flex direction, not the display, flex direction this guy and I say row this is not going to make any impact because this is a default thing and you can notice the same thing here okay now on to a mobile world why I am telling you mobile world mobile world again and again because flexbox is used quite a lot in mobile environment as well so that is why in the mobile environment as soon as you say uh, display flex everything just aligns up from top to bottom okay it is always good to mention the flex direction along with it so that there is no confusion of a default thing. So always mention the flex direction here as well. Now, luckily for us, uh, there is not much to do in the flex direction and that is a good thing because the more things you have, it becomes a more confusion. Just like you have a row, you have a row reverse, just like that. And there we go. Now what row reverse will does, it will just reverse everything, okay? Now reversing doesn't mean it's going to just align on the right side. Reversing simply means that it's going to stack the first element at the very right and then second and third, third, fourth and so on. Now this is a classic mistake. Everybody does that as soon as they just flex right, they just assume now everything is going to float right. No, it's completely and drastically different from float right. It just stacks uh, everything from the right. Okay, pretty good. Now what do else we have? Now just like we have row, uh, and row reverse, we have column and column reverse. So we can see that now they are behaving just like you might be expecting them to behave on the first time. So one, two, three, four, all lined up, but now they are following the property of flex direction as column. And you guessed that right, we have got flex reverse as well. Again, the first element is going to be at the bottom. So this can be really helpful if you want to simply customize your look and feel of your website on a mobile world. You can just mention the uh, properties on a minimum scale height of 400 or something and can reverse the order of few element. We will be talking about ordering the elements onto the web page later on. Right now, we have just cleared up uh, some of the basics on Flex. And again, these are the properties which are applied directly on the outer container, not to the inner guys. We will come back later on and we'll talk about what are the properties that you can apply to inner guys. 
Right now, we're just talking onto a block level outer element, which is container in that case. Okay, so we haven't written much of the code, just three lines here, and basically the two lines are acting here. Okay, so this was your basic idea about Flexbox and Flex Direction.